another edition of Forward Focus Thursday. We're excited to have you here with us today, as always, as we thank you for tuning in to um, hang out with us for a little bit. After a brief uh, one-week hiatus last week, we're ready to go. We're excited about what God is doing, and we can't wait to just share some things with you. So as we begin, as always, we're going to just open ourselves up uh, with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity again to come before you, thanking you for all that you have allowed us to be able to do. And now as we share and celebrate today, we ask that we would do so through your power and through your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're a little, we're a little short staff today, and I, and I want to begin by saying that um, to all of our Forward Focus family, um, friends, and everyone that watches, uh, to our marvelous um, staff and everybody that helps, we want to ask uh, and thank you all for your continued viewership. And also thank you for your prayers and solicit your prayers during this time. Um, as I've been granted permission by our father to share that he's currently um, in the hospital, but he says not to worry. He's okay, but he will take your prayers and your solicitations. Matter of fact, my brother Steve is in the room with him um, right now. Uh, Mike just left. I'm heading up that way myself. Our other brothers are there as well. So we're all making sure that dad is um is okay so please continue to keep him yeah. in prayer as we um ask god's blessings upon him and we can't wait for him to come back and share everything with us and come back and jump back on in as he is a vital <clears throat> and a critical part of this discussion each week and we praise the lord for him so moving forward as we always do let's go around the horn uh, mike what's going on with you and then we'll go to steve uh, everything is fine. As you said, just coming back from spending time with mama and daddy is daddy is recuperating uh, from Chicago, uh, getting back into the mix of things here, reinserting myself back into uh, the pastor, being the pastor of the church after being away for a little while, taking care of personal concerns. I think it's important that uh, members understand that the pastor has a personal life too. And I thank God, for those members that understand that, um, that uh, this is a, a part of, um, of, of, you know, in terms of what we're doing. So it's good to see you all, as well as some other obligations that have kept me away on some Thursdays. Um, we've pretty much postponed for right now. And so uh, I'm glad to be back for that time. <clears throat> okay, what about you, Steve? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm here with here with dad and uh, all is well. I was glad to have spent a great deal of time with my brother, Dr. Michael Cousin, who took charge. He did all the driving, did all kinds of stuff. So I just I just love I love my brother, love all my brothers. And my brother Dave is there at the house now. And Dave is trying to do what he can. And my brother Philip is on the way, so God is good. I, I don't intend uh, to leave the hospital at any time today. I'll probably be here on into uh, well into the night. I'm trying to trying to make sure that Dad's all right, but he's he's good. Dad, Dad is good. He's good. He's much much better. So just uh, continue to pray for us, you know, that all will be well, because we know that God can do anything but fail. Amen. 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 I'm glad to hear everything is going well and glad to hear that uh, dad is doing well and mom is doing well and glad everybody could be there for assistance. And again, please, everyone, keep us in your prayers. So we're going to jump right into it today. Um, it's only one wait thing. Minute, we... Wait a minute. Tell us what's going on with you, brother. Oh, I mean, nothing really. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm all right. <laughs> you know me, Mike. I just, you know, coming over, coming, um, getting over a cold a little bit. So if I sound a little congested, or a little um or look a little tired just because I'm coming off of a cold, but I'm all right, no big deal. You know me, I keep on pressing and keep on pushing. Um, but things are well, no complaints. No you know, I remember, I remember a time when you would go outside without a coat on when we lived in Michigan. I still and do. No, almost like an Eskimo. Just go out there, just blend in it and wouldn't worry about it. Now it's something you moved down south and catching these little sniffles. <laughs> no, you, you know, it's funny because for me, um, since the beginning of time for me, and you remember this, Mike, every season, when the season changes from winter to spring, and usually from summer 
um, to fall or fall to winter, but almost always from spring, I'll catch a cold. Yeah. Season change. Yeah. It lasts for a couple of days and it'll go away, but it's been going that way forever. Just And some of it's probably allergies and pollen and other things, but, you know, no big deal. It's all good. Okay. But thank you for asking. I'm good. But I'm excited okay. about today's topic. There is only one thing we could have talked about today. Easter's coming up. We're excited about the holiday. Churches are reopening and becoming reacclimated. I believe uh, St. Paul, where my brother Mike is, has opened up fully now. Steve, have y'all opened up fully yet? Oh, yeah. We we opened up the first Sunday in uh, in March. Okay, so you've been open for a minute. So Steve is open fully. Mike is open fully. We've been open yeah. fully, excited about church and Easter. And we're so excited about that. And, and we're going to get to that in another broadcast. But today... <laughs> Only one thing we can talk about. We must talk about the slap heard round the world. Yes. If you are not familiar with this, let me give a little backstory for everybody. If you've been living under a rock for the past, um, since Sunday, I can remember I was watching on Sunday, um, I was watching uh, basketball games. And I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was Sunday where the University of North Carolina Tar Heels uh, men's basketball team secured a berth in the final four to play against that other school down the road on um, Saturday. Shout out to Tar Heels. Um, nevertheless, um, in the midst of this, my nephew Timothy, shout out to Tim, who used to get on with us and hopefully we'll get him back. Timothy sent me a text message and said, man, did you see what happened? And I said, no, what? He said, I think Will Smith just slapped Chris Rock. And I said, what do you mean? Was it a skit? Was it a joke? He was like, no, at the Oscars, he slapped Chris Rock. Come to find out, there was a joke that was made um, about Will Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, who was suffering from alopecia, uh, which is a um, medical um, term for the, the loss of hair. It's a disease, it allows you, makes your hair fall out. And um, Chris Rock was just giving his monologue, a brief little monologue, because he was a presenter. He was not um, a host. And as he was doing this, he says, um, you know, Jada, good to see you. G.I. Jane, looking forward to seeing that um, coming out soon to theaters. A reference to a Demi Moore movie that was probably from the 90s, I believe. It's it was from the 90s. From the 90s, a dated reference where uh, Demi Moore played a, uh, um, a um, I think an army. Um, no, the first, the first woman admitted into the SEAL training program. Thank you, Mike. First woman admitted to SEAL, and she shaved her head for the role. So it was a dated joke. It went over a lot of people's heads for the most part. Will, and this is me talking, Will was laughing at the joke at first until he looked at his wife, who clearly was not laughing. And then she rolled her eyes and almost on cue, he gets up, storms to the stage, slaps. I thought it was a punch personally, but everybody said it's a slap. Slaps Chris Rock across the face, walks back to his um, chair and Chris Rock tries to go on. And Will yells out twice, keep my wife's name out your blank mouth. Now, thoughts, gentlemen, we're going to go across the whole gamut of this thing today. We're going to have a good time with this today. Talking about, um, was it right? Was it wrong? Um, our thoughts about it, um, any insights about it, any moral implications, biblical implications, uh, societal implications, racial implications, cultural implications, whatever you have, we got it all. So, gentlemen, jump right in. And it ain't but three of us today, so everybody gets a chance to say everything they want to say. No going on mute today, Steve. We don't have a full house. You got you can't go on mute today. Well, let me just say this. I saw a quote from Morgan Freeman. He said, self-control is strength. Okay. And with that, um, this is the first time the Oscars were produced by an African-American, uh, Will Packer, Shout out. HBCU alum from Fla uh, FAMU, Shout out. also an alpha man, uh, who, who helped produce the movie Stomp the Yard and some others. Uh, and so for this to occur, um, when you had, you know, the persons I feel really uh, bad for, just to use that term, uh, Samuel Jackson received his Oscar, but it wasn't during the televised portion. Quest Love received a uh, Oscar for his um, his movie, his documentary of Summer Love about those concerts that persons really didn't know about the concerts of peace uh, of uh, 
you know, during that time with, with, with black artists. Um, and, and, and I think that it shows that, that uh, you know, there's a whole backstory to it, but when they show Will Smith laughing and his wife rolled her eyes and he seemed to be, you know, enjoying the moment, but then to go up there and to act like that, you know, on international, I would say now international TV. International. And to hit Chris Rock. Now, Chris Rock during the rehearsals did not have that, you know, uh, that impromptu piece. Uh, they said during the rehearsals, he didn't do that. But, um, you know, self-control, he showed self-control when he did not strike back and how he reacted to it. You know, if it was, they were said if it was another comedian, uh, like uh, Steve Harvey, Dave Chappelle, Chris Hart, uh, Kevin Hart, uh, you know, D.L. Hughley, uh, would have done that. What I was, I would just say uh, it wouldn't happen because I don't think that they would make that remark, such a remark like that uh, to his wife. I think they would have directed more at him, more so at his wife. But I think they pick and choose those times. But I'm not, you know, there's no real De a definite answer to that in terms of uh, right or wrong, but I think there was a wrong response that he did of going up there and uh, doing it during the taping. I would have said, look, with three, he's worth three hundred and fifty million dollars, mm -hmm. and Chris uh, Rock's worth is fifty million. Fifty or sixty. I would have said, I, you know, there's a way to respond to that. I would say I would have waited and said, look, I'm going to address this. Um, when, when the camera's off and say, you just, some, some things you just don't put yourself out there because it's not just you, you're representing your community. Mm -hmm. And then to get up there and start crying about <clears throat> his acceptance speech. And then here's the irony. Then he goes out and parties. <laughs> he goes to, uh, you know, you do something if you're really remorseful, you say, No, I need to reflect, I need to sit back, and reflect what, I, what, what, what I've just done. And I think that this is it's, it's shameful, it's an ugly display, it pumps up a stigma, there's a stereotype that we've been trying to live down for generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, person that say, Well, he stood up for his woman, well, yeah, but there's a way to do that. But you have to do that right then and there. Is it? I mean, have some cooth about yourself and class in terms of how you handle a situation. Go ahead, Steve. <clears throat> so that's my take on it. Steve, you got anything you want to say about it? I think you're on mute, Steve. And the, the dietitian is here, so I'm just I'm, I'm on mute. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so, go ahead, Joe. No, and, and here's another thing. So with, with all this going on, there was also a report out that says that the Oscars, the Academy, asked Will Smith to leave after slapping Chris Rock. Yeah. And Will Smith refused to leave. So he was allowed to stay and receive his award. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I would, you know, well within their right to, to escort him out. I mean, that right there was an assault. And we think about the Oscars now, the, albeit the history is a racist history of the Oscars, is judgmental as well as, uh, you know, uh, you know, it is one where they pretty much set the tone. They've been, they, they haven't been impartial, uh, it's prejudiced. And for you to, to, to buy into, uh, stereotypes that they've, that, that, you know, try, we've been trying to knock down these things in terms of lifting black cinema and black actors and actresses uh, for him to act like that. If for that right there, if you're going to take an action like that, be prepared for the consequence. And the consequence was to escort yourself or to exit from the scene, leave. You know, I think for that, he should have left. Yes, he yes he he should have left because he's not known for that type of behavior. You know, right. you're a yeah. rapper. I think one thing they should say about him that he was soft as a rapper. You know, you know he had to, you know he's educated, 
uh, his first uh, uh, DJ was that uh, 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 DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Uh, you know when they when they would you know those records. Joe, you bought those CDs. You sit there and listen, and they would do. You know, I listened to that stuff with you. I said, okay, that's catchy. You know, it's non non threatening. Yeah, it was non threatening. Well, the, now to get up there and have threatening behavior, you know, come on, man. Well, and plus, the, you put your business out there with the person you should have slapped was that young boy. Well, mm, yeah. so this is what uh, what what one of our commenters, my uh, my lovely wife, Carissa, says. Um, she learned on another show. Will the will was asked, not told to leave. Is that power and the measure of entitlement? Is is that does that speak to his power and his entitlement? I would that's that speaks to his power where he was asked, but he didn't he didn't leave. I think if, if he had self-respect, he would say, I would leave right now. Thank you. If I but, feel as if I'm not welcome here, if my actions and also as well as my actions that I've just that I've just taken on. I think it's best. All they're going to do is just continue to shoot the camera at you. You bring in heat towards yourself. You brought that on yourself. What if he had slapped somebody else? Oh, that wouldn't have happened. Say like, I mean, and, and I'm just going to ask, just out of curiosity, do you think he would have felt the same sort of impulse or impetus to slap, say, instead of Chris Rock, if it was The Rock making a joke, or like, a, like another comedian who does not share the same hue, like a Jim Carrey or um, or a, a Louis C.K. or someone like that. Well, Louis C.K. has his own problems. He does that. Uh, so, I think uh, nix him from that list, my brother, because uh, he has some serious problems he's dealing with. Oh, I, I, um, I, was, I was unaware of those. Yes, uh, read, uh, read, my brother, read. I'll read about that one. <laughs> I check. I check that one out. Uh, you know, no, he went and done that with the Rock. You were like, yeah, ha 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 ha. But remember, he was laughing, ha 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 ha. But think about it now. His thing is in 2016 when Chris Rock got up and made the comments about you know the white the uh, the the all white academies when black actors were boycotting. And he said Jada Pickett was boycotting, you know, and he made a reference to her then. And then to come back and to say something, you know, to see her there, she's front and center with her husband. Uh, you know, he was saying that, you know, enough is enough. But then you got pictures of him and, and Chris Rock doing, when Chris Rock dressed up as a woman on Fresh Prince, that episode, looking for Big Willie. Huh? And that's another thing about Hollywood. They said that you can only make it, uh, they expect black man. each black man in order to make it, you got to do, you got to dress up at least once as a woman. Start, as, in the far, I, know it goes, <laughs> I know it goes back further than this. Oh, that's funny. Flip Wilson and Geraldine. And then you got- well, Yeah, Fox I mean, Fox. I mean, but that's that's the, that's the whole thing. Yeah. They said in order to make it, yeah. you know, they said Milton Burrow didn't mind, but that's Milton Burrow. But, um, you know, for a black man, if you think about it, many of your black comedians, those who were not really pushed to the forefront are those who refused to put on a dress and act like that, you know, um, you know, and so Rock, Chris Rock, you know, D.L. Hughley can get away with it. Kevin Hart can get away with it, you know, but, uh, you know, Chris Rock, I think for him to, at a time like that, that's sort of like stuff you do at the, at the cookout. You know, you do that. You, you don't. You don't. You don't do that at the Oscars. You know, you. You know, Don Rickles had his stick. That was his stick. You know, Dale Hughley. That's his stick. But they pick and choose, and they have somebody who has talked about her condition on her red table talk. Um, but, but you know, let me let me just step in here right quick. Yeah. The whole issue, the crux of the whole issue is self-control. I heard you all say something about that a little, a little earlier. Yes. Here you have here you have one person who lost control and you have another person who exercised self-control. And that's the thing because when you look in Galatians the 5th chapter 
that's a part of the fruit of the spirit. You know, self-control. You have to be able to control yourself, you know, control your emotions, keep it in check. Because it's a terrible, terrible thing to have seen something like that, you know, and it went all over the world. Yeah. So what does that what does that say about us? Well, Steve, what does that say about us? Let's let's say that let's stay there for a minute, Steve. I'm glad you brought that up because I wanna we're gonna we're gonna move back and forth. And we're not painting anyone to be a villain or anyone to be a saint here, but while while Chris Rock's response is championed on a lot of a lot of places because of the self control and restraint, what about that set that segment of society that says he's he's soft because he allowed a man to slap him on national TV and didn't do anything about it? No, you pick. Oh and no, 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 no. Go ahead, Mike. No, I mean that's like let me just let me let, let me take it to I'm another not agreeing. venue. I'm not agreeing. I'm just moderating. You know, that's like another venue. Even as pastors, when you get disrespected. The person's talking about getting you. Now. We're getting there. Talk we're about your there. family. Keep going. Keep going. Right? We're getting there. Now. And you, I've, mm-hmm. I've had some to even threaten bodily harm to me. But uh-huh. I said, you know what? Let me step back and be able to, you know, uh, you know, it was hard to do that, but it was, the person said, Pastor, you show strength. See, culturally, uh, we like to use, I was about to go off, or, we, you know, that's why we have so many problems now because we act off of emotion and not necessarily reason. We rationalize. Right, 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 right. And say, that's what, that's right. what we're used to seeing. That's what we're used to seeing um, in terms that we're perpetuating this type of behavior. But stand up for your woman, go knock him out. You know, you don't go do something. Uh, yeah, you can do something, but afterwards, say, look, afterwards, this requires a conversation. And this conversation is this. You know, so... There's a way of how we respond, but no, no, um, you know, standing up for his woman. Um, yeah, but but here's but here's something else. Here's something else too. Now here's, here's something else I'm thinking about. Now Chris Rock should have exercised a bit more self control because he went for the low hanging fruit. I mean, there she was, you know, suffering from alopecia. That's just that's that was you know that wasn't exercising self control either. No. In, no, in my mind, that's low hanging fruit. You know, just going to get it because it's there. Do you think it's possible, Steve, that Will, that Chris Rock thought he thought he could make that joke with Will Smith because he thought their relationship was one that clearly it wasn't. Sure, okay. sure, but you never know. You never know how a man feels about his wife. Until you until you get to that line, you get to that wait point. A wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But here's the thing: once your business hits the street, you have no business. When you get out what, a year ago or two years ago, what was it, two years ago? The entanglement. I mean, I'm, I'm while, while you're talking, I'm I'm, a look, I'm looking stuff up. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the 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 entanglement issue, and how you put your business out there. You know, that's one thing mom and daddy told us, don't put family business out there. But when, when Hollywood blows up your mind and you, you put your stuff out there, and some of the things that she's, that she's said about him on Oprah, and some of these, the, the view and the table talk about her view of her husband, some things you don't need to be sharing out there. It was two years ago, Mike. Exactly. And I mean, the first person that, that, uh, that really got to him was 50 Cent. And 50 Cent pulled his card and said, Will, you know, uh, and they, they have clips of that. They have clips that Will Smith respond in terms of tweets. But after, after the whole thing, uh, you know, you can't have your children out there running all crazy. And you say, well, that's, that's them. You know, and they put up there, that's how we do it in, from West Philly. When was the last time you've been to West Philly? Okay, I got, I got a question for y'all. Got a question for you. So in this world we live in now, um, in the world we live in, you know, one of the things that we really strive to to do is to be an anti-bullying world. No bullies, you know, anti-bullies, a bully-free zone, get the bullies out of school. Question, who was the real bully on Oscar night? Was it Chris Rock for telling the joke or was it Will Smith for smacking Chris Rock? Who was the bully? Well, you know, I can, I, I can, I can certainly uh, state my opinion 
the bully in my mind, I may be stepping out a little bit, was Will Smith. Okay. I mean, you know, because you could you expect Chris Rock to come off the cuff, say some off-color stuff. That's just that's just who he is. What really got me was when he walked up to Chris Rock, just like you know, and just and just just slapped him, punched him, you know, which didn't, which did, which to me didn't make a whole lot of sense. But see, what exacerbated that, and what sticks out as a as a thorn, a sharp thorn, is the profanity that he used after that. I mean, it's it's not so much, it's not so much him hitting Chris Rock, as much as what he said after it, for the whole world to hear, and for the whole world to see, which I think was just plain, just plain awful. What do people think about us? What do people think about us? What what do people think about us? When has that ever happened before? Let me just say this: I take the opposite of that, Stephen. Okay, go ahead. Uh, my That's opposite fine. is that you go out there to present, you present, you know, and I mean, that's why you have persons like a, a, a Denzel Washington or a, 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 a Sidney Poitier to present, do the present, present. There are some shows that even some comedians, Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle has presented, but has it gone out there and attacked somebody, you know, I, I would think all this, because remember, the day before they had a rehearsal. And this brother tells you, this is what you must do. He disrespected that brother who was producing this the first time for the Oscars. That's a good point. I mean, there it is. You got a brother who's, the, and again, I get back to the previous point I made. You diminish the fact that Samuel Jackson finally gets an Oscar. I mean, Quest Love gets an Oscar. And Will Smith, you up for uh best, you know, male, uh, male actor for the, you know, for that year for his role uh playing uh Richard Williams of the Serena. Uh, if, if, even those sisters were ashamed of what they saw. And he's gonna say that's like a daddy moment. That's re reflecting back to the role, you know. So you said that's how my daddy acted, but then all this could have been avoided had you just say, look, read the script, you know. But now, script. but now here's the thing. Here's the thing. If The Rock or that other man, Idris Elba, you know, the, the, if he would have been presenting, would Will Smith have gone on the stage and slapped him? But wait a minute. No, no, because I would say they would have sense enough to know the moment where they are and to say, especially Idris Elba, he was... You know, this brother, you know, has handled himself when they denied him being the first black James Bond. Yeah, boy. All right. But how he handled that with class. All right. And uh, The Rock, The Rock was somebody who, made, who played second string on University of Miami James with the Hurricanes for the U. But look at, was able to get his, to get his career through wrestling and through his connections with his father and with his, with, with his uncles. And, but he knew they knew how to choose their moments. Now the rock cusses, the rock gets raw, but he also knows when he comes out, he's you know he's top drawer because of how he presents himself and how he sells himself. That was a chance for Chris Rock to sell some more tickets, although his ticket sales are skyrocketing for his for his tour now. I don't know, but uh, so. you know um, he had no business saying that. Mm -mm. I hope not. But but you know, but you know what? You know what, Mike? Chris Rock could have made another joke about himself. He could have come out and done self-deprecating humor and said something like, Well, I'm presenting this award tonight. Back in 2016, I hosted the Oscars. Now I'm presenting the award. What kind of career move is that? He could have said a joke like that or something about himself. People would have still laughed, would have still got his point across, and could have kept going. But or better yet, or better yet, Joe, as I read what one comedian said, how he would have addressed it. When Chris Rock would have said that about his wife, he would have said, yeah, at least I'm still married and living at home with my kids. Which is, which might've caused Chris Rock to slap Will Smith. So which means, you, you may you know, you, you, go, may you know, uh, as they say, uh, thou shalt not throw shade if thou cannot throw hands. You, you, you made me laugh at this one when you talk mm. about as, and Steve and Mike, y'all are both 
bit familiar with this. Chris Rock was supposed to present, but he went out and told jokes and kind of took his own moment. Y'all ever had somebody in church try to sneak a preach before? And what sneak a preach is, well, you ask them to pray or you ask them to read scripture or you ask them to do something to service, but they try to sneak a little sermon in. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You're supposed to do. Oh, no, I, can, I, 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 give you, I can give you a real good, I can give you a real good example. When you have somebody do the invitation. There you go. And they, they, and they re-preach the sermon. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear the sermon all over you. Stand up and give the invitation and sit down. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't have to re-preach it. Or better yet, or better yet, I've heard one person say the invitation should be just as long as the sermon. Now, that person was a general oh, officer. No. That person was a general officer. I said, in other words, instead of inviting, you're begging. And you were pulling at, you know, Timothy and I, my son Timothy, I was just laughing about that. So how many times you see people coming down there crying, telling me they're going to give their life to Christ. But then every time is over, they go back out, do the same thing. You have another meeting a, a month later, they come back down crying. I said, what happened last month? I guess Christ couldn't find you or you didn't find, y'all didn't hook up. Um, you know, it's just, you know, and, 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 and also, you have those that like to do it during an annual conference. They tell you, the bishop will tell you, the committee will say, look, uh, do the offering. And you start preaching. Or better yet, uh, give, you know, you, you would do the morning prayer or the invocation. And you give a grocery list. Oh, yeah, boy. God, oh, yeah. go to the hospital. Oh, yeah. God, go. But God is everywhere. You ain't got to tell God to go where. You know, God is everywhere. Make us know that God is there. You know, you got, you know, yeah, yeah, sneaker preach all the time. <laughs> all the time. Well, can can I get can I get real personal for a minute? Y'all ready? Go right ahead. We're gonna play a game. Yeah, go ahead. We're gonna play a game. If we're brothers, we know each other. We have to be honest with this, all right? I, I'll give my answer too. Last. <laughs> but oh, yeah. last? No. Last. 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 No. We have no. to be honest with this. No. What like the show on ABC? What would you do where they set up things like that and um, they set up things along those lines and, and situations and see how people would react to the situation? So were you, first of all, were you in, we're going to start with the easiest. Were you in Chris Rock's, well, actually the hardest, were, were you in Chris Rock's shoes and that happened? What would you have done? What would you do? Mm. I if tell you what I would come, do. If he'd have come, or better yet, you preaching on Sunday morning, Mike and Steve, and me too, and you you say something to a parishioner, like maybe you say, you know what, Brother Smith, Brother Jones, but I ain't seen you in church in a long time. Glad to see you this Sunday. I wonder where you've been. And they come up and smack you in the pulpit for making that joke. What would you do? Well, I've had that happen. Woo. Um, it wasn't a slapping, but we had a a presidential candidate come to the church. I'm not going to name the city, Milwaukee, um, but um, <laughs> um, and wanted to come and be with us and to worship with us. And so um, when a representative, a representative from Texas, Sheila Jackson, uh, came and said that, um, you know, for uh, I'm not going to give the candidate's name, Dean, um, <laughs> who was unable to be there, but she was there with members of the Congressional Black Caucus because of the history, the political history of the, uh, of the church. She spoke. And then um, I said, thank you so much. And we, we, we are honored with your presence. And there was a man in the back who stood, raised his hand. I thought the brother was testifying. I, he walked all the way down grabbed the microphone and said, I don't believe that we should have this going on in church. Your separation of church and state. And personally, I don't even like your candidate. And I think this is wrong. And I'm just saying, you had a few people say, amen, amen, the zealots. But when it was over, I said, well, let me just say this. I've been taught by my parents to have home training. 
And the home training is when someone comes to you as a guest, you treat them as a guest. Others have been invited, but we thank you for coming. Unfortunately, I must apologize for the display, which is not reflective of everyone in this congregation. But what- afterwards, that brother came to me. I'm sorry, Rev. I said, no, no. I, you know, I could have, I could have reacted to him, but it took self-control. And during that week, there were more folk calling me saying, "Thank you, Rev. We were more embarrassed, and they were calling him and saying, "You right. are ashamed of yourself." What, what if, right. in, what if, in grabbing the microphone from you, he would have pushed you? Perhaps made you fall, didn't make you fall, but visibly pushed you or or hit you or jostled you to grab that mic. 1-800 call Sam. <laughs> One eight hundred call they, Sam. They have they have remedies for that. Mm-hmm. They do. They have remedies for all of that. I mean, you what? just get your get, get call your lawyer and go about your business. Okay, exactly. so we're done with it. So Steve, if it were you, what would you have done if if, if you were saying in Chris Rock, I mean in Will Smith's shoes, I mean Chris Rock's shoes and, and got smacked? So well, first of all, you, you have you have to understand that you're not just you're not just representing yourself. Mm-hmm. You're representing your family. Mm-hmm. You're you're even representing your friends. I mean, so you have to you have to act in such a way as to not embarrass the people that, that, that you're around, the people you love, the people who, who believe in you. And, you know, you know, I I just believe Will Smith had a bad day. I, I just believe he did. I don't know what happened on the way to the Oscars or what, but something, you know, something just ticked him off. And you have to, you have to be careful about that. I, I, I had a meeting a long oh, time yeah. ago, back back in the 80s, back in, back in the 80s. We used to have official board meeting every Monday night. And before I would go to the board meeting, I would always take Two, goody, two goodies headache powders because not for the headache that I had, but for the headache I knew I was going to have. And I got in there and they got to talking and arguing and fussing about money. And I said, forget it. I left the meeting, which I should have stayed because when you leave the meeting and leave them folk in there without dismissing it, you know who they're going to talk about next, don't you? You. Well, right. let me just say this. If you go down that road, I've had a meeting where persons called the bishop to remove me as the pastor. Wow. And I've had to sit there and listen to these malicious accusations and sit there and persons, you know, you, it, it, you, you know, rarely would we get at least 25, maybe 30 people for a board meeting. But when it was told the bishop was coming, there was 140, maybe 150 people in church. And these are folk I hadn't even seen. And so for that to occur, to talk about, you know, this, this is talking about self-control, Joe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had to sit there. And there was one, one person, a member of the clergy, who stood up and talked about me. And so as he, when, when he got finished, the bishop had a break. I called this brother outside. I said, come on, let me talk to you. And I told him, I said, I don't know what I've done to you. And we had a conversation and I set him straight. Didn't, didn't hit him doing do, do nothing, nothing like that. I just told him there's only one thing we have as pastors and that's honor our craft among ourselves, respect. And to this day, we, we are friends. He apologized. He said, Reverend Cousin, I learned from you that night, self-control. And things I go through, I think about how you handled yourself that night. And so now he could have, you know, for that, from that moment, I think we as a people, again, getting back to what I said earlier, we've got to dispel that TikTok generation mentality of I'm going to get back at you. I got to show, you know, it's like, it's almost like the animal world, like acting like, um, you know, the biggest, the biggest baboon, the biggest, the biggest gorilla. I'm going. I got to show myself. I'm. I'm the puffer fish. I got to blow up. Show you that you know. I'm not going to take that. That sort of stuff is causing us uh, to right. act more on emotion than on reason. How many persons have had their windows busted out their car because they thought they saw something, but then afterwards, I'm so sorry. I thought it was you. How many per- because you know act first and think about it second. That's what it was there. She probably told him, 
Try to look at him. You gonna let him talk about me like that? And next thing you know, he up walking up there like big bad, big bad will. Hey Mike, and and like I hear your words ringing in my in my head when you said that. And when she looked at him like that, you don't know what that man's gonna face when he gets home. <laughs> oh, you don't know what you don't know what hell that man been going through in his home. She probably, you know, she probably yeah 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 yeah. She probably all on him. She's about it on him, and he's like, he's about as crazy as driving with a mosquito in the car. Can't kill him, but just aggravate the fool out of him. He said, if I don't do something, yeah, if I don't do something, let me, oh, Lord have mercy, let me go up there and do something. And he's going to walk up there and hit that little man. But see, the little minutes. man out there, the, the little man should, you know, for me, he wouldn't have hit me if I was a Chris Rock. When I saw him coming, I would have stopped backing back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so look, I say, where, where, where's the presenter? <laughs> this, this is this is my thing. Damn, I, I would like to damn, think. Damn. I would like to think that I'm bigger than that, and I would like to think that if he hit me, I would be able to show restraint. I would like to think that, and that is the right thing to do. But I'll be honest with you. The first thing I think of is this man just hit me on national TV. The next time I see Michael, or David, or Stephen, or Philip or Timothy, or Stephen Jr., God knows. First thing Michael would say to me is, mm, that man punched you in front of the whole world up there on TV. <laughs> so no, see? no, 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 you know what? You would have said that as I was rolling down the window of my Bentley, or of my, uh, you know, as, as, as I'm counting the money from the settlement from, uh, from which we have in terms of the assault charge. Now, it took self-control for Chris Rock, not to say I'm not gonna press charges. Got something else for you. Hot off the news wire from Kelvin Beasley. Thank you, Kelvin. He says, did you see the other camera angle where it showed Jada laughing after Will slapped Chris Rock? I didn't see yeah. that. I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, that was, the, that was, that was the overseas feed. Ooh. You know, they show that. And you know, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, she's from Baltimore. You know, I guess that came out, you know, she gonna say, Although I know some very nice people from Baltimore. I know some good, yeah. we got relatives in Baltimore. Yeah. But just cause you're from Baltimore, like Detroit, you know, like, all of Detroit does like, like, like Philly. Like, Philly. you know, Philly, you know. Uh, yeah, I saw that and that tells you right then and there. You know, you just say, look, you just cost yourself millions, millions. Right. Millions. So, right. So you know, now, Samuel L. Jackson said he got banned from Saturday Night Live because he said the forbidden word, the F word. Yeah. And because one of the actors, Keenan um, Ivory, uh, was that uh, Keenan, um, who's that? Thompson, Keenan Thompson, was supposed to stop him doing one of the skits before he said the F word. Say, you know, uh, uh, but he just let him go on. He said the F word. And they said, he said, he ain't asked been back. So, all right, let's, let's flip it around now then. We talked about how you would have responded if you were um, Chris uh, Chris Rock. How would you have responded if y'all, if you were Will Smith and somebody made that joke about your wife, she was sitting next to you. Uh, from what it looked like, you you laughed at first, but she clearly wasn't laughing. How would you, how do you think you would have responded if you were he, if you were uh, Will Smith? I would have said, "Look, darling, uh, we're gonna handle this afterwards." I, I like that. You know what? It's on tape. I'm sorry for you to do that. The bigger response would have been, I would have said, I'm not going to have my wife disrespected like this. I would say, now, yes, we're going to leave. Mm -hmm. We're going to leave. I, I would not. So, I would, you know what I would have said? What? You know what I would have said? I would have looked at it and I would have said, baby, you know, there's more in the woman than in the land. <laughs> you know, don't, 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 let, it, let it roll off your back, baby. <laughs> it's more. <laughs> it's now, you know, Stephen, you would land. have no peace. You would have no peace in your home. It'd be, uh, you, know, you, you ain't, ain't got no to turn on the air conditioner because it would be cold enough. Mm -hmm. Now, they say, say, baby, that ain't nothing. Let it roll off your back. Let it roll off your back, baby. Now, you, you, Let you it know, roll off your back. You know, it would have been a classy move, too, if um, instead of saying something when he, when he made that joke, it was, it was widely known. It was pretty much a given that Will Smith was going to win the Best Actor Oscar that night. He'd already won the Golden Globe for the for the role and looked like he was a shoe in to win the Oscar. So what you do is you take your wife 
on stage with you when you accept your award. And then you can say, you know, I, oh, some of you may not know, a joke was said earlier, my wife suffers from alopecia, please keep us in prayer because you don't know what people are going through. And you could have done it that way. There's many different things you could have done as opposed to going up and slapping the man in the face. And you would have said, look at this statue, bald ain't that bad. Right, look, she's, she's a beautiful Yeah, woman. you could have done a lot with it. Now, and there's another video out. The internet is undefeated. In other words, whatever you say or do, even on these Forward Focus Thursdays, everything we say is documented. Oh, so, yes. So, we, you know, the internet is undefeated. But there was a clip floating around. Have y'all seen the clip of Will Smith on the Arsenio Hall show? On the Arsenio Hall show, Will Smith makes a joke about Arsenio Hall's bass player by saying, you know, he likes to follow rules. He looks like a rule guy. He's a ball guy. He said, look at him. He got that ball head. He got to wax that ball head three times a day. That's one of his rules. And then they were laughing and the guy looked at him. He wasn't offended, but he looked at Will Smith and Will said, I'm just jokes. It's just jokes, y'all. Just jokes. So there's that. Well, man, and again, thou shalt not uh, throw shade if thou cannot handle hands, okay? Dang. Uh You know, when you throw shade, be prepared to have shade thrown back at you. You know? Um, that, that's where it says, if, if you dig one grave. Well, dig two. I yeah. mean, this is, uh, I mean, you got 350, you were for $350 billion. I think it was Tiffany Haddish that went to visit Will Smith and Jada Smith. And they asked her like, down lunchtime, what do you want for lunch? And she said, you, what, what do you mean? She said, whatever you want. And she named something crazy. He said, okay. He just called down to the kitchen and they had it for him. I mean, you living at such a, at such a level and stuff like that, you know, you should, you could, t you know, daddy had an album, The Last Poets. <laughs> the Last Poets. But daddy wasn't around, we'd listen to it. And uh, it said, I, you know, it, 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 forgive me, I know it's on tape, but uh, it's that uh, niggas are afraid of revolution. And what there's a line on there, you could take niggas out of the country, but you can't take the country out of niggas. That was like the cool commercial. Uh, cigarettes, when cigarettes were advertised on TV. I'm dating myself now. Um, so mm -hmm. in other words, Mary J. Blige even said that. She said, you could take me out the hood, but you got to get the hood out of me. Um, you realize that you know, you 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 at a level now that that type of mentality is not expected nor needed. You got a team of attorneys, and I mean, for what you said, take your wife up on stage. If you that would have been a better bonding moment after you done been on there talking about, oh, I was with August and it was an entanglement. Oh, I was through with you. Yeah, you know, we were through. We were through. Yeah, I was through. And even there, you cussed. I was through. You know, I was through with you, right? I mean, for that right there, you say, look this, from chaos to community, look what we have now. Man, because that oh, but, 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 but you know what else? You know what else just you know what else just dropped in my spirit? Money has a way of insulating people from reality. Oh yeah. You think you can do yeah. whatever you want to do if you have enough money behind you. Yeah. yeah. This is, this is what I know, you know, because money gives you access to excess. You can have that excessive behavior. You can do those things because you feel like you have enough money to get out of whatever situation you get into. And truly, 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 Will Smith has enough money to get out of it. He well, does. You know what, Steve? So it kind of, it kind of, it, it gives you a false bravado. That's what it does. A falsehood that you can take on whatever is in front of you because you have enough money to back you up. Yeah. Well, that, how's the, that sound? Well, the, the movie in the movie The Wolf of Wall Street, um, the character played by uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, um, I can't call his name now. Um, Mike, you, you probably know his name, you probably think of his name, but the main character that started the, uh, the company and everything, 
he, he talked about the fact that he did a lot of drugs um, throughout his life. And he said, but there was one drug that was the most powerful drug of all the drugs he'd ever done. And that drug was money. Because money, Steve, like you said, it gives you a sense of invincibility stronger than any drug um, ever. And, and that's what happens. And I think that's what happened. Another one, uh, Reverend Pace made a comment that said, um, could this have been about Will Smith's ego taking a public blow after Jada's affair with that other man? Yes. <laughs> How do you go say Yes. That? Yes, they've already, uh, as I said that earlier, they pulled this card, 50 Cent pulled this card. Mm -hmm. So how you gonna let a young boy disrespect you in your home, in your home? And 50 is known to do stuff like that. And not to mention what the comedian Corey Holcomb said, uh, Mike, which, you know, is, is far worse, but what he said. On the yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I heard that last night when you sent me that clip. I said, Ooh, Lord have mercy. And for him to say, to say, to say that, of course that man has heard it. And they probably said, Will, when you going, when you going to respond, you know, man, you know, they talking about you, boy, the streets are talking, the streets are talking like country Wayne, the streets are talking, the streets are talking. And you know, you can say, yeah, but I don't live in the street. You know, so, okay, so, I'm at a level now. I ain't got to do that. So as, as we prepare to uh, to wrap this up today, y'all, I think we can all just come to the agreement that both parties were wrong. Um, in, in one way or the other. Will was wrong for the response. Chris was probably wrong for the insensitivity. Or crossing the line. Crossing the line, insensitivity of the joke. There's a lot that can be learned from here on on both sides, and there's a lot that we can do. Um, and once you get to a certain age, you know, um, when I was younger, um, I, I've, I've had that happen, Mike. I've had people come to me in church and threaten me and, and this, that, and the other. And you know me, I was quick to tell them, well, if you got a problem, let's take it outside right now. We can handle this. But as I get older now, I don't, I don't handle things the same way because I would like to think that I have matured. I would like to think that. And, and you know, sure Joe, act as irrationally. Well, you're saying that pastoring in itself teaches you self-control mm -hmm. because the lies that are said about you, um, persons who belittle your character, and then you have those that come to that person's defense. Oh, Reverend, you know that's how she is. You know that's, that's how, how they, they are. are. No, you don't have to be that way. As I, as I, what I often tell them, no, that's an excuse. You know, you don't have to be that way. Um, there's a higher level of living that we are to achieve. And, but they want you to exhibit self-control while they run amok. And you say something to them. Um, you know, I had a person who, who, who was talking about me one morning. I've said it, you know, once before. Reverend Cousin, why don't you talk to me? When I see you, you don't ever say good morning to me. And I stopped. I said, why should I? because you always find something negative about me to say. And why should I, I don't need that in my life, especially not before I'm getting ready to go preach. I think there's a lot of times preachers make the mistake of having people, Reverend, I need to talk to you five minutes before you, no, no, what you need to do is wait. As Big Red was saying the five heartbeats, my office hours are from nine to five. So self, control also in terms of your own parameters that you set. Joe, you, you, you remember, we talked about this. If you don't respect your time off, don't expect people to do it. You, you, you have to, I, I learned that. I'm going to tell you where I learned it from. And, I, and I, I'll call a person's name. I learned that from one of our bishops, Bishop Jeffrey Leith. Bishop Jeffrey Leith. Bishop Leith said, he said, if you have a day off, make that your day off. Because if you don't respect your day off, no one will respect your day off. Exactly. Hmm. And so with that, I mean, even in the church, we talk about the fruit of the spirit. And that's one of them. And so now I think it's not just for the pastor, but it's for the believer. And I think if we put this into place, what a better world this would be. What a better place Atlanta would be. Ooh, the city of wretchedness. <laughs> well, you know. Well, you know, the reason I said it because all those reality shows are based yeah. there now. Ooh. But, you know, according to according to a rapper who made a new song called "Sorry Not Sorry," 
you know, I, I live in Canton and Canton is not Atlanta, you know, so that's what, that's what she said in her song. But, but nevertheless, uh, it, it's been good being with everybody today. Uh, but I thank everybody. I'm going to give my closing remarks. Then um, we're going to, uh, Mike will give his, Steve will give his. And Steve, since you are the senior statesman today, you're going to give the last remarks and the closing prayer as the senior statesman today, Steve. Um, with age comes uh, privilege, Stephen. So you get to you get to close out. I just want to thank everybody for watching today. And thank whatever I say our, won't be long. You believe that? <laughs> thank all of our production team. I want to thank uh, my brothers, uh, Mike and Steve. I want to ask your continued support and prayers for Bishop. Uh, and I want to um, also ask your prayers for Steve Jr. as he's an annual conference and Phil Senior as he's traveling. Um, and our brother Dave, who's traveling as well. Please keep us all in your prayers. And I just thank you. I thank you for this time and the sharing. And also remember, one thing we can learn about the situation with Chris Rock and Will Smith um, on both sides, let's learn to show some, some, give some grace and give some mercy to people when they make mistakes. Um, we paint Will Smith to be the villain and what, yes. he did, what he did was wrong, but it is absolutely not irredeemable. Uh, some paint Chris Rock as the villain and what he did was wrong. What he did was not uh, in or ear or unredeemable it still has the possibility for redemption if we just find some grace in our hearts think about some people in your life who might right. have done you wrong and find the grace uh find what did it say mike find a space for grace for them in your life mike um i wish to uh thank just david see my brothers um uh, thank you for praying and uh, keeping our family in prayers our father is recovering um, from recent procedure and uh, healing. Uh, say I'm blessed for safe travel uh, to be with him uh, when he was there and for my brother David who arrived safely and Stephen who's there, our uh, oldest brother who's uh, traveling today and for Reverend Joe who'll be traveling uh, real soon in the next couple of days, be up there. Uh, pray much for us, for our family. Uh, keep us lifted in prayer. You know, a lot of things become trivial when something affects a family member. Amen. And so all this other stuff that's happening, that's fluff. But what really matters, what I'm learning now is for family. Um, and so it's good to have family that cares. And uh, we pray for one another. And for those persons, pray much uh, for our church, um, that we may be able to uh, do uh, what practice what we preach amen and uh, for all the persons who are watching today uh, brother Pace who's watching <laughs> sister Reverend Pace I pray for you each day Reverend Pace uh, and for uh, uh, sister Gail Kwan and others God bless you and then as I close on this Tobacco Road is jumping um, the Tar Heels in the 504 we need your prayers. Yes. Because the other team down the road, you just don't know what it's like to have those people on the other side of Interstate 40. Um, oh, it's going to be a big weekend. And so I hope that they are victorious. Brother or not, you know, just pray for uh, for our, the, the event to be safe and just uh, keep us lifted. And more importantly, I forgot, I don't forget this, pray much for mama. Uh, keep mama in your prayers. Uh, she would generally be saying something when daddy is on. Uh, we love your mama and praying for you. So keep us lifted. Thank you. Well, I'd like, I, I thank God for this, for this venue. Thank you, Dr. Joseph Cousin and Alan Temple staff, Brother Lavender, Reverend Pace, Sister Frey, you know, for all for all that you do. This this is so significant in dad's life yeah. that he said, let just stay in the room so I can hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to I want to be a part of it. So I just, you know, I I thank God for that. I thank God to be here with dad. And, and even now, my brother David is going to make some of his famous chicken soup. <laughs> he's, gone, he's gone to the grocery store to buy the, to buy the chicken. So he says he's going to make some chicken soup. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. And I will let you know, 
<laughs> what it tastes like. I would definitely let you know. Please do. Please do. But I, you know, have you have you tasted it before? Anybody? No, I know that David cooks well. Yeah, so we'll we'll see. Well, that's what that's what yeah. David is doing today. And then pray for pray for Mama because anytime you've been with the same person. Married for 67 years. You know, that's got to be kind of tough. Yeah. It's hard to stay with one person two years, three years, much less 67, 67 seven years. What have mercy. Right. Yeah, you know, so that's so that's tough. So so pray for them because they're they're tied together. I mean, shown up tied together. When one goes up, the other goes up. One goes down, the other goes down. So pray for them. And uh thank God for each and every one. Let us uh, let us pray. God, we thank you for being who you are. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for your compassion. We thank you for your kindness and we thank you for your healing power. And God, even now, even now, we pray that you lay your hands of mercy upon dad and wrap him with your arms of protection and keep him safe in the knowledge that you doeth all things well. God, we love you today because you've brought us from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. So let your mercy find us where we are and let your grace undergird us and, and lead us with your powerful right hand and we'll be careful to say you did it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone.